Hi, and welcome to my channel, A Country Life. I'm Jennifer, and I know you guys are gonna love today's video. I am sharing with you five super easy and fast crock pot meals. So as you... So as the video progresses, you're gonna see me make all five meals in one day. I'm gonna pop those into the refrigerator and just keep them uh, coming out every single morning for that night's supper. It's gonna be just a really, really easy way to um, meal prep. It doesn't require putting anything into the freezer. So if you do have the refrigerator space, I highly, highly recommend making Crock-Pot meals this way. It's so easy to prep them all at one time, do all your chopping and all of that at one time, and you'll see how I make this all work even though I don't have five Crock-Pots. And as an added bonus, today's video is a collaboration with Heather from A Catholic Mom's Life. She's gonna be sharing her uh, five favorite Crock-Pot recipes as well. So definitely in the description box below, uh, as soon as you're done watching this video, you're going to want to hop over to her channel as well and check out her five recipes. That way you will have 10 recipes. That's like two weeks worth of crock pot meals for your family. And I can, I guarantee you're going to just love Heather. So as her channel title suggests, A Catholic Mom's Life, Heather shares um, motherhood and homemaking through the eyes of a Catholic woman. So I think that I would highly, highly recommend her channel if you are a new um, mom or new at homemaking. She has shared her journey over the years about kind of her coming into this space of uh, loving motherhood and loving homemaking. So definitely I would recommend her channel to you if you're finding that you're struggling with homemaking or motherhood and just I just know that you will find lots and lots of inspiration at her channel. Please go over there and subscribe and just be ready for all kinds of great content. Let me tell you, I love her. Sometimes she'll do like these laundry chats or she's called them something else because she's not always doing laundry, but she'll just do like these little chit chat videos where she just kind of shares her heart and shares the things that are on her heart. Definitely check out her channel. I know that you guys are gonna love it. So I know that I'm excited to see what she, uh, the recipes that she puts together because she has four little kids. And as you know, sometimes little kids are picky. And so I'm really excited to see the recipes that she comes up with. Ooh, I should do something with my skin. Wow, that's looking, looking a little tired here today. So the recipes that I'm making today are chicken noodle soup in the crock pot. We're also going to do Busy Mom's chicken fajitas, slow cooker, Mexican dip, cranberry pork loin roast. My plan, because the way that I tend to cook normally is to try to do a lot of cooking at once and then kind of pull the stuff out through the week. So my plan here today is to get all five of these meals pretty much ready to go. Maybe I'll have to add you know, something the day of, but I'm gonna get all of these ready to go, pop them into the refrigerator. So this whole week, they'll just be, I can pull one out every day, put it in the crock pot, press low, and we'll be good to go. So here are the meats that I have. I have the pork loin roast. I have um, chicken legs. This is going to be for the chicken noodle soup. This is for the Busy Mom's chicken fajitas. I have some hot sausage and a pound and a half of ground beef for the um, Mexican dip. And you know what I think I forgot to say? We're also going to do the fifth recipe is Amber's creamy potato soup. For the chicken noodle soup, I really want to make a great big pot, and so I pulled out my seven quart crock pot here, and I am going to use these liners. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergy season is still, still trying to kick my butt. But um, this is the first time I've ever used these liners. I, I see them being used all over, and I thought, you know what? We are entering cranberry harvest week here, and things are gonna get busy, and how nice will it be to not have to wash out all these crock pots? So I picked these up at Walmart. I wonder if I could get a better price at Amazon. I feel like these are like $3.47 or something like that for six nice. liners, which seemed kind of a lot to me. But anyway, we're gonna use these. Yep, that's what they are, Maria. Can you open that package up? Right here. You just cool. peel. <coughs> Ooh, you've got the coughs too. I've been coughing like I was coughing one after another at night time. I know. I, was in bed. I know. Okay, so you just peel this right here. That's a little tear spot. So peel those open, and then we're gonna line up our crock pot here. 
And first thing, I'm going to start with uh, the chicken noodle soup. I'm going to put all the chicken in. I just need one, honey. I'm trying to get one. So that's what it looks like. It fits pretty snug in the seven quart. That's the biggest size it says you can use. So for the chicken noodle soup, I'm just gonna get these chicken legs in here, put them, set them on high. I'm gonna cover this all with a pretty good amount of pepper. Just a minute, Maria. I'll get you going on something in just a second. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of kosher salt. I'm going to add just a little bit of water, maybe a half a cup. Put the cover on and those will be done in about four hours. So to get ready for today, what I did is make kind of a little list so I knew kind of the, the general order as to how things are going. So first, start the chicken. I already did that. Next up is chop three onions and slice one. Whoops, Maria, can you go get one more onion for us, please? And then we have to brown the beef and the sausage, assemble the Mexican dip, that's gonna be for Tuesday night, assemble the potato soup, that's gonna be for Friday night, assemble the pork roast for Wednesday night, chop, no, chop veggies for soup and fajitas, and then assemble the chicken fajita, and by that time, my chicken will be all done, I'll bone the chicken and assemble the soup, and there we go, we'll have five things all ready to go um, for this whole week. Do I have to peel them? Do you want to peel the onions? Yes. You want to peel the onions? Okay. There you go. There's the garbage. All four? <laughs> All four. Okay. I'll start on this one. Do I have to do both layers? So I just need a half a pound for of the hot sausage for the Mexican dip and a pound and a half of ground beef. So I'm going to get this going in my pot right now. If you've been around my channel before, you know that I almost always start with frozen meat. But um, yeah, I was kind of on the ball. And last night I took the meat out, put it in the fridge, and was ready to go this morning. While Maria continues peeling the onions for me, I'm just grabbing out all of my um, canned goods that I'm gonna need for today. So I have some enchilada sauce and refried beans for the Mexican dip. I have cream of chicken soup. I'm on to step four, which is to assemble the Mexican dip. Yes. And so in this crock pot here, this is a four quart crock pot, so not a real big one, but it's gonna be just barely big enough for this dip. I'm going to put in one can of refried beans, one can of red enchilada sauce. I have some cooked rice here, some just cooked white rice. I'm going to put in a couple scoops, so maybe a cup and a half to two cups of rice. I'm also going to put in one pound here of the Svelvita. Awesome. Okay, I just drained my meat here. Just a colander in a bowl. Give it some good shakes. And I'm gonna put this hot meat right on top. That's probably not the best camera angle, but that's what worked. I'm gonna get the meat right on top. And this is all fitting into my four quart crock pot. Everything fit into the four quart crock pot here. I'm not even gonna stir this. I'm going to just put this into the refrigerator. So tomorrow after lunch, 
what I'll do is just pull this out of the refrigerator and put it into the crock pot here on low and it's just going to go the afternoon anywhere it should be all hot within about two to two and a half hours but it doesn't really you know I do have a warm setting here so that I can just turn this down to warm so we're going to serve this up with chips and sour cream and black olives I do think I'm going to serve it with a side of shredded lettuce as well because I'll probably just put this on the shredded lettuce and skip over the chips that keeps this a fairly low-ish carb meal. The next recipe here we're going to put together is step five. This is Amber's creamy potato soup. She found this recipe once years and years ago when I think I had put her in charge of finding a meal or something like that and making a supper and this was what she found and we've been making it ever since. It's so so good. So how we're making this going to make a whole whoops 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 it's going to make a whole lot of soup because this because we like it we can eat this for a couple days no, easily and um so we just make a great big batch of this okay two cans of cream of chicken soup can you pour those in this this recipe here is truly a dump and go you just dump everything in there's really no um you don't have to pre-cook any meat or pre <coughs> or pre-brown any meat, anything like that. So this is one of those nice recipes when you're in a hurry in the morning. And if you don't like onion, then you don't even have to do the step <coughs> of chopping onion. You could just use some onion powder um, or you could just use dried minced onion as well if you're in a hurry. You want to do this? Yes. We're going to put in a great big heaping tablespoon of this Knorr chicken seasoning. We're going to do a half teaspoon. I'll just do it in my hand. Okay. I'm going to do a half teaspoon of black pepper. And again, we're not even going to stir this. Okay, sweetie, let's not even stir it. Can you open up a bag of hash browns? We're going to do two bags of hash browns. Gosh, Mom. <laughs> what do you need, Sam? For the reach homework. Do you have to we break have to, that uh, up? up the Proverbs 3 5. Ouch. Yeah. Proverbs yeah. chapter 3, verse 5? Yeah. Okay. And is this whole thing, or is it just. No, five? look at that. That is. Break no, this up. You, you looked up. Yeah, that's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 35. So. Just Proverbs just, 3 5 is that. Trust in the Lord. Trust what is in it the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Does it keep going? Well, then it's so much more. So we're back at this here now. Maria's going to put in three and a half cups of water. Can you put that in real slowly? I mm will. Kind of go all the way around. Okay, good. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mom says slow, but then she wants it done fast, right? <laughs> be patient, Mom, be patient. So I just put the cover on this. We're going to put this back into the refrigerator, and we will pull it out when it's time to put it into the crock pot later in the week. And then this particular potato recipe is going to go on low in the crock pot for about six hours at least. I believe that I typically put it even longer because we like it to get really kind of creamy and where the little hash browns kind of start to fall apart and it's it's not a real chunky soup then. And then about a half hour to an hour before you serve it, put in two bricks of cream cheese. And the key to making this happen fast is to make sure that you take this out about an hour in advance, set it on your counter so that it can come to room temperature. Then when you put it in, it doesn't take as long to melt throughout. And then this will be served in a bowl with bacon bits on top. I just get the package of already cooked the real bacon bits, not the bacos, but the actual real bacon bits. We'll serve it with the green onions that are over here. I'm gonna dice these all up, get them into a little Tupperware so they're all ready to go. And then we'll also serve it with uh, shredded cheese. Okay, so next up is, on my list here is 
step number six and it says to assemble the pork roast so what i'm going to do here i actually have a big pork roast this is five and almost a quarter pounds and um just because i'm going to be feeding a lot of people and i'm hoping that we might have some leftovers with this i might trim off some of this fat back here we'll have to see how thick it is when i open up the package i'm going to cut it in half place it in here salt and pepper the whole thing and then I'm going to get out a can of cranberry sauce and a little bit of French's, French's dressing. I'm going to mix that together, pour it over the top. It's going to be ready to go. If you've been around my channel before, you know and are most likely aware that we are cranberry farmers and I tend to almost always make my own homemade cranberry sauce, but this time I didn't have any canned and I didn't want to take the time. Usually that's kind of a day in itself to make a whole bunch of cranberry sauce. Then I'm just going to kind of cover it, maybe a fourth of a cup or so of French style dressing. the fourth crock pot recipe ready to go. We'll just cover it, put it in the fridge, and this is gonna be ready to go. So one thing that I should mention to you is that if you are gonna be cooking like this, you really wanna make sure that you're using the freshest meat possible. So the chicken legs I already had frozen, and then I let them thaw for, they were in the fridge I think for three days. And that's why I'm cooking those right away to do for the chicken noodle soup. Whereas these other meats, I purchased them fresh. And so the dates, like the use-by dates, aren't for at least another five or six days on all of these meats. And so that's why I can get away with putting them together, putting them in the refrigerator, and they're not gonna spoil. So just be very aware of that. time to start on step seven which is to chop all of the soup and the fajita vegetables so you saw earlier that Maria had uh, been washing up a bunch of vegetables and that we already got the onions done earlier but for the chicken noodle soup I cut up four carrots and four ribs of celery for the fajitas I had to cut up two green peppers and one orange pepper and you might notice that the orange pepper is pretty shriveled and it's slightly embarrassing, but that was the pepper I had and it didn't have any like mushy spots on it. It was just shrivelly, so I figured it's gonna be totally fine once it's cooked in the crock pot because it's they're gonna get soft anyway. So this last spring I did can up a whole bunch of black beans and kidney beans and I've still been just working through those. What I, mean, what I did here is I just put one of my liners into an ice cream pail. I'm just going to get the whole recipe started in here, and then I can just lift this and put it right in the crock pot on the day that it's time to make it. So into here, I'm putting in one jar of kidney beans, one jar, one can of Rotel, which is just uh, diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can get these in mild or hot. I did choose to get the mild ones. I did drain off some of the liquid. I'm also going to throw in all my peppers and my onion. 
I'm going to do two teaspoons of cumin. I'm also going to do two teaspoons of chili powder. I'm going to do one teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Now I'm just going to trim up the chicken here. Uh, if I wanted to spend a little bit more money, I could have just gotten the chicken tenderloins, thrown them in there, and that would have saved me a step. But they did seem a little pricey, and I didn't want to, um, and I just wanted to stay within my budget. So I opted to slice up the chicken myself. For the chicken part, you really just want to use the amount that would be appropriate for your family. I, so far, this is the fifth chicken breast, so I just kind of work with what I have. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a lid here. This is the Busy Mom Chicken Fajitas. I'm gonna put a lid on that and put that into the fridge. So once I have that in the fridge, I'm gonna just kinda get my chicken cleaned up here, and then I'm gonna get all of this ready into one little container. This is gonna go in for the soup, and it's just kinda time to tidy things up again. So the chicken is coming along nicely. It's been in for a few hours. We're just trying to get the chicken all the way done so that it basically just falls off the bone. That's the goal here. I am back now and the chicken is completely done. The easiest, easiest way to do this is to, whoop, look, it's so tender, it's just gonna fall apart. Okay, we're gonna try to get one over here. I was working in some school with both Amber and Sam and Peter, so I had plenty of time to let the chicken actually cool. And so it's not super hot, so I can actually grab a hold of the top, but I just go through quickly pulling all the meat off making sure because with legs there is always that one little tiny bone that you have to watch out for um, but just pulling it all off real quick the kids are just going to sit down and watch marley and me we'll see how they like that i'm not sure if they realize just how sad it's going to be there's that little bone i was talking about you want to make sure that you don't get that in there and then that's pretty much it I have all the chicken off of the bone here, and that is a huge pile of chicken. It's gonna make a nice big pot of soup here. So a little tip here is that I, because I did want to use most of the broth that it made, you know, I had added a little water to it, and then some of the, you know, like the fat and drippings and juices and everything. I do wanna add that to my soup because it get, adds such tremendous flavor. So I just put a couple holes in here, and I just, let the juice all drain out. Some of the little bits of whatever did come through, but most, if there's any little bones or anything, they all got caught in the bag there, and it's, it just works. So now I'm gonna add everything back to my crock pot here. So you just saw me add in 12 cups of water and two tablespoons of the chicken bouillon flavor. So I just gave it a little stir and then I always stick my finger in it quick and just taste it to make sure that it has, excuse me, kind of the salty flavor that I want for the chicken soup. And then I'm going to add in a bunch of pepper just because pepper makes everything better. But what I have here is um, a great big bag. This is a 16 ounce bag of the egg noodles. You could use like a kluski noodle or a real thick uh, Amish style noodle. Really anything like that works really well. If, if you want to keep this, um, you know, low carb, this is perfect just like this. I'm going to put it in the fridge now at this point and tomorrow I'm going to get this out and just put it right back into the crock pot. Put it on either low or high, depending on what time I get it out. And I'm just cooking it until all the vegetables are soft because the onion, the carrots, and the celery are not cooked. 
We're just going to cook that until that's nice and soft. This is probably the most involved meal of all of the crock pot recipes I made just because, um, you know, it just, there's a few extra steps. So tomorrow I could do one of two things with the egg noodles. I could put about half of this bag straight into the, straight into the crock an hour or so before I'm going to serve it. Otherwise I can make the noodles in their own pot tomorrow and then just uh, let people kind of noodle up their soup. Typically that is what I do the first time I make um, a soup or a chili. I'll leave the the carb out and then that just kind of gives me a chance to have some of it without that carbohydrate whether it be the noodles or barley or um, or like uh, elbow macaroni and chili or something like that. Just gives me a chance to have one serving at least with it out and then whatever noodles are left or barley or whatever type of soup I am making, I'll just throw those into the crock so that they're there for the next day for whatever the leftovers are. And apparently they are liking Marley and me. So as the week goes on, I'm going to check in with each of the different crock pot meals to show you what they look like when they're done. Good morning, it is another uh, cranberry harvest day and guess what? I am totally reaping the benefits of doing all five of the crock pot, crock pot meals at once because now I just ran out to the garage this morning, grabbed my crock and I put it into, <clears throat> excuse me, I put it into the base here, set it at low. This is the cranberry pork roast and we're just, I'm just gonna let this slow cook all day, hopefully, Joseph does not come by and take the cover off. That is my only thing, is that with Crock-Pot meals, one thing to know is that every time you lift the cover, that adds approximately 20 minutes of cook time onto your meal. And so, if you have a child who likes to go through or likes to go by and constantly take the cover off, then uh, that can be a problem. So, anyway, I'm just going to make sure that <clears throat> I try to keep my eye on Joseph today so he doesn't uh, keep uh, opening opening this up. He loves to come by and open it up and see what's in it. I've been trying to show him that, you know, you can just look through the glass. But anyway, that's what we have going for today. Later tonight, I'll actually put a little bit of time into making some just really quick instant mashed potatoes. And I think I'm going to do a great big thing of... Um, just steamed broccoli with this. It's already been in nine hours and I'm gonna check the temperature quick. I am super happy that I did all of these crock pot meals early in the week so that they were all ready to go because I'm not <laughs> sorry for that. Um, I have been getting sicker and sicker as the week is going on. I thought it was allergies. Okay, this is so done. <laughs> I thought it was allergies. However, it is not. It seems to be becoming more of a cold or a sinus something. But anyway, crock pot meals are really, really saving me. It was actually Heather who had reached out to me to collaborate on this, and I'm so glad that she did because I had kind of gotten out of using my crock pot on a super regular basis. Oh, sorry for that lighting. Let's see what we can do here. We'll just turn it off. I had gotten out of using it on a super regular basis just because, I, I, I honestly, I don't know why. But I'm really, really happy that I, like I said, that I did all these crock pot meals because so far everything's been tasting delicious. It's been so helpful to just be able to go out to the refrigerator and just pull 
whatever it is that I want for that day. It's been super, super helpful. Definitely, uh, when this video is all done, head on over to Heather's, check out all of her recipes. She's gonna have some fantastic, very kid-friendly recipes. I just know it, because she has uh, four little kids and I don't know if her kids are like my little kids. Sometimes they get kind of picky. So definitely go over there. I know that she's not going to disappoint us. She is just the sweetest um, person in the world. I always come away just feeling so joyful after I watch one of her videos. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these. And like I said, don't forget Heather at A Catholic Mom's Life. So here is a little portion of the roast that I just took out of the crock pot. It seems like it's really, really tender. It's actually just kind of like falling apart as I try to lift it out. My intent here is to always slice it and then put it back in the juice. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. It might just want to fall apart. Good morning. It is Friday morning. It's already um, 8 o'clock and at 6 o'clock this morning I put the potato soup in. I'm not going to open it because I want to serve this for lunch today. So I did put it on high to make sure that it gets nice and done and it has time for the potatoes to kind of break down and get really creamy. You see that I also have some orange dots in here. That's because I decided to throw in some carrots. Um, we have a house guest <laughs> here for the whole cranberry season and so Uncle Dan brought us some carrots and just thought, you know what, carrots in potato soup is delicious. So I just threw in some carrots in there this morning as well. So this is just going to cook all the way until shortly before lunch. I do already have the cream cheese set out because I want it to be uh, really soft when I put it in here so that it uh, melts up really, really quick. There you go. Just another great way to start the morning. All I had to do was chop up some carrots and I was good to go. I'm going to give you guys a little peek outside through the windows. Does it look like it's really cold? Because it is. It's 43 degrees right now and they're saying it's actually supposed to get colder as the day goes on. Everything, my plants are blowing over and you can see that it's been raining a little bit. So this is the perfect day for some soup. I refrained from opening up the crock pot from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. And at 10, you know, it was still on high. It was perfectly creamy. And so I turned it down to low at that point. And um, now it's just been on low. It's been almost two more hours. Just a minute, sweetie. And about 40 minutes ago or so, I put in the two bricks of cream cheese. And so now I'm just back stirring it. I just kind of let it set there with the lid on. Just a minute. Everybody wants me. And so uh, now I am back and I'm just kind of stirring it. So I kind of just go through it like this, sort of whisking it, kind of, <laughs> just to get all the cream cheese melted and combined. And the house just smells good. So this meal is happening on the perfect day. I didn't get my camera turned on quick enough, but we just had like about three minutes of sleet <laughs> outside. It, Like I said earlier, it, the temp is dropping. It's now down to 41. It's pretty cold and the harvest workers are gonna really, in, I think, I'm hoping, they're really gonna enjoy coming in and having some hot soup. I don't make lunch for them every day. They bring their own lunches, but sometimes when I know it's gonna be a especially cold day <clears throat> I I will let them know the day before hey I'm gonna make some soup in case you want to have a bowl so anyway they're gonna have they are going to I hope like I said I hope they're going to enjoy this and let me just show you what do you got going there Maria playing with the tongs yeah. so here's how we're gonna ser serve the soup up we'll put it in a bowl sprinkle on a little bit of this this is just a mild cheddar and then put on some bacon bits and I sliced up all those green onions earlier in the week, and so those are all ready. So that is it. Very easy and very filling and very comforting. This is the fifth recipe here, if you guys are keeping count, and I'm gonna be making this one for supper. It is actually already 10 after two, so I'm gonna turn my crock pot here onto high, and it'll be, it'll be ready in time, because we haven't been eating until close to seven o'clock lately. Um, with it being harvest season and all so and some my some days i think it's even been later anyway this is the chicken fajita mix and i have everything in here and i had already lined this so i'm hoping that this is going to work out i'm just going to lift this all up and i'm 
I'm just going to put that right in there. Put that over the edge. Put the cover on. The one thing I am finding with these liners is you really have to make sure that you have your cover seated on nice and tight. Because um, sometimes we're, if they get like a, if they get wrinkles in here, then it seems like it doesn't want to seal quite all the way. But I got that pressed on. I have it on to high. Um, I'm going to be gone for about an hour and a half or, or so. When I get home, I'm going to give this a quick stir and then let it keep on cooking. So I wanted to just give you guys a real quick peek here. I've had this crock pot, this is my four quart crock pot, set at high. It's been in here for four hours. Here's what the chicken with the kidney beans and you can see some of the vegetables there. So I was just kind of giving it a little check just to make sure that everything got cooked up really well. I do have some shredded lettuce here, some sour cream. And then I have some rice um, going over here. I think I'll cover that. That is going to be supper here on this Friday night. And I did want to give you guys a real quick peek at this. This so this is actually puff pastry dough, and I made like just a slab apple pie. Really, no recipe. Just just unrolled the puff pastry, threw in some apples, cinnamon, sugar, and just a dash of nutmeg cooked it all up this is just an egg wash on top cooked it all up and this is also going to be for supper it's going to be dessert